Hi, this is Ashley Griffin. Today I'm going to be talking about outlier detection in medical claims using NIME. So what I did was I imported a workflow of outlier detection medical claims that was available on the NIME workflow public server. So I've already imported it here, but I want to show you how I found it in example since I'm not starting from that point for time purposes. So I used applications and number 14 medical claims and I copied this here to my local server which is right here, medical claims. I double click this interactive outlier detection and this is the workflow and there is very helpful description about the data set and how to go about analyzing the workflow, which is what I did for this project. So I will describe a little bit about the workflow and then we will go into more details. So the workflow shows the detection of outliers in a public data set of medical claims from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in 2008. The data set contains Medicare inpatient data that consists of claim ID, sex, age, DRG code, ICD-9 code, number of days in the hospital, and the claim cost. So in this project, an outlier is classified as a claim with an unusual high cost for a specific disease. And these outliers are identified in the data by the target variable, which is disease. And the mean and standard deviation are computed to determine the cost of stay and the outliers. If the cost of stay differs more than two times from the mean value, it's considered an outlier. But in this workflow, we can actually change what we classify as an outlier in the threshold, and we could potentially make that three or four times the mean value. So let's jump into the workflow here. So the first step is the file reader. The data is read in from this 2008 Medicare file. So let's look at the file a little bit more closely. And this will really help us understand our analysis better. So I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. Okay, so first we have the claim ID, which is unique for each patient. Then we have a sex identification code for male or female, an age category code here, claim-based DRG code, and DRGs are diagnosis-related groupers. So for example, if I had a knee surgery in the hospital, every service related to that knee surgery would be captured under one DRG code. ICD-9 codes also correspond to DRG codes, but are used for internal international classification of diseases. Claim days code shows the number of days that was stayed in the hospital. The payment average for each DRG, and then this is the payment code that corresponds to the payment. So as you can see, um, it's a relatively small data set, and there are a lot of codes here that are not helpful when looking at the um, data for the first time. You would need some type of code book to address these. So this leads us to step two, which is pre-processing the labels. So the DRG codes, ICD-9 codes, all of the demographic variables that are coded are, giving, are given names here. So let's look at this data. So for the, the sex category, it's now male or female. The same with the DRG code and the ICD-9 code, age, etc. So this is much more helpful when initially looking at the data set. So how is NIME doing this? So let's go ahead and double click on pre-processed labels. And for gray boxes that have um, a check on them means there is an additional workflow that's set up behind the scenes. So I won't go into detail on this, but you can kind of see that 
NIME is reading in more files and they're replacing those cells that were coded with data from these files. So let's go back to our initial workflow. So after the data is replaced with the descriptions, the third step is for the data to be parameterized so that the user can change the group or aggregation column in this meta node context menu. So this is parameterized data filtering. So let's go ahead and double click on this and have a look at what the filters are. So we can see that in our analysis, we are currently including these DRG codes. We could include others. Let's say we want to include heart failure. We can add that into our analysis scenarios. Gender, we're including all. If we want to change that, we could hit change and look at just females. Days in hospitals, we are including all days. Age filter. So we're including patients over 65, we just want to include all patients, we would add that in there. So I'm going to click cancel or else we'll have to rerun the entire workflow and it will take a few moments. But if you wanted to save these changes, then you would apply it and then rerun your workflow. So the fourth step branches off. There's an upper branch here and a lower branch. The upper branch of the workflow identifies outliers for one target variable or single column outlier detection. And the lower branch identifies outliers across several variables, which is the pair column outlier detection. These variables could be things like disease, duration of stay, and cost. So let's examine the single column outlier detection more closely. So here, our outlier is inpatient days, and we are grouping by DRG code. In the fifth step, this allows the user to group selected diseases to get more detailed information about the group. So let's go ahead and see what our results are. If we scroll all the way to the right, we can see the outlier was inpatient days. We are grouping on DRG code. So our DRG code is rehab. This is the same for this entire data set here. And we're looking at inpatient days, and this is a lower bound outlier. We can sort inpatient days. And these should be low because this is our lower bound. So they range from one to two to three days. Now if we want to look at multiple outliers here, we can include inpatient days, the DRG, and the payment amount code. If we look at the details for this, we are um, going to be looking at the psychosis DRG code. And we have psychosis here. We are looking at the lower bound on inpatient days. You can see these are all very low. If we want to see more specs or metadata about this, we can click on the spec column tab. You can see what the actual mean is, standard deviation, the total in the group for lower bound, total in the upper bound and more of the values here. And we can change this to um, other DRG codes. We will apply this, click OK. This might take just a, um, <clears throat> a few moments to rerun. You can see it's yellow here because it has not been rerun. So the single arrow, we will click that as it will just rerun this step here for us. And it is in the queue now. It looks like it, it is almost ready for us. So let's go ahead and examine the data. We filtered on other digestive 
disorders and we have a lower outlier and it's based on the number of inpatient days there. You can see how this tool could be very useful for identifying outliers in medical claims or in the healthcare system. I think using this workflow could also be applied to many other types of industries like finance, banking, um, marketing, aviation to identify outliers that are useful for our analysis. So again, this was an outlier detection in medical claims in NIME, and I thank you all for listening. Talk to you later. Bye.